Hello, this is Stan Stolniker with Hub Culture, and we're at Climate Week NYC, and I have joining me right now Victor Durr from the Global CCS Institute, uh, one of the very sort of forefront institutions working on something called carbon capture and sequestration. So can you tell us what that means, what that is, and a little bit about how it can help uh, the clean revolution? Well, carbon capture and storage, or sequestration as you say it, is basically taking the carbon from those emitting uh, power plants and industrial plants, capturing it, uh, shipping it to sites that we can store the CO2 safely and for a long term and do it in a very economic way. And what we're about is to promote the acceleration of that process on a global basis, getting people to work together, sharing knowledge, and encouraging projects to take place, ensuring that uh, we can get our voice heard with government uh, policies and advocacies in doing this on a fact-based uh, basis. So carbon capture basically takes the carbon out of the air. So uh, It takes it out of the emissions that are the major point sources, such as a coal power plant or a gas plant or an industrial plant like uh, cement making, as okay. an example. So it happens at the sort of where the point of the, where the carbon is produced, and it prevents it from, I guess, going into the air then? Uh, yes. Right, yes. okay. So what do you think, uh, I know that the, the impact that this technology can have compared to other forms of carbon reduction is very large. Can you give us some comparisons between uh, different types of uh, activity with this technology compared to, say, renewables? Well, the scale of these types of uh, technologies is such that they have a major impact once we get the uh, uh, technology out there and rolling because the world still is relying for, uh, on uh, fossil fuels for over 80% of its energy source. So in comparison to renewables, uh, I'll give you an example that Germany and their investments in support from the government subsidies and, and, and whatnot for renewables, uh, the eight projects that are out there right now, which are capturing 25 million tons of CO2 per year, is basically almost half of what Germany has tried to do on a cumulative basis to uh, reduce uh, their carbon, and that's from the renewable sources. And I'm told that the investments that they've made are about an order of magnitude higher in terms of the government subsidies for renewables versus what has been so far invested by the governments in these eight projects. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the magnitude of the impact of carbon capture and storage on a global basis in the future. So effectively it means larger return, lower cost. If we can get these items on cost of capture down, that's absolutely true. Right, okay. great. So um, where do you see the future of this technology going and uh, what's your sort of personal goal around Climate Week NYC this year? Well, I'm here to make sure that we have, as you well, an all of the above strategy, that carbon capture and storage is a part and a necessary part of meeting the climate goals and energy security that is part of a clean energy portfolio for the clean energy revolution. So that's why we're here, and that's why we're promoting that part of the message as part of the clean energy revolution. It's great that you guys are taking such a forward role in supporting this and supporting Climate Week NYC. I'm Stan Stolniker with Hub Culture, along with Victor from the uh, from, sorry the Global CCS Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank Bye -bye. you. Okay.